you know, it was the little things against St. John's <laughs> yeah. after they lost on the road earlier this week. They were so happy when we visited a two-round be right back here where they said it's going to sound and feel like an earthquake at Hinkle Field House. <laughs> it's sounding and feeling like that already. Off we go. Butler in number four, UConn. And it's Posh Alexander, veteran guard in the Big East, holding for the Bulldogs first. And down on this end, this is where UConn, they've been banging the table. We want to be better down here. As Telfort misses, and one and done for the Bulldogs on their first trip. And UConn, uh, they'll allow him to take that three-point shot there. They want to keep him out of the lane and keep him off that right elbow. And one of the best offensive teams in the country. Ooh. Top five in efficiency, mm -hmm. top five in the poll. But playing without Donovan Klingen, and it's... Samson Johnson in the post. And it's off Davis out of bounds, staying with the Huskies. Yeah, and play, playing without the big fella puts a lot more pressure on the guards on the perimeter to be after to score the basketball. And so Camp Spencer particularly is going to have to knock down some shots to bring some much needed balance to their offensive attack. Alex Caravan on the first take, stuck by Davis out of bounds with three to shoot. The attention to detail and the rotations of Butler have been solid here early. In a stance for 27 seconds on this opening possession. Castle, quick fire, air ball, and Butler pulled serve on that first defensive track. Yeah, this morning, they worked on that underneath out-of-bounds play to make sure that they're switching and keeping their bodies underneath guys and challenging shots late. Well, beautiful execution there by Butler. The staff's message was three words, but really one word. Physical, <laughs> physical, physical yes. on those inbound sets when Butler's defending. Pierre Brooks, top score for the Bulldogs. Bangs inside, got his own, and put it back. On those switches, he'll have those opportunities to be able to drive some of the bigs, able to catch Alex Caravan on a little switch, but at the angle to be able to get to the basket. Stefan Castle, the projected lottery pick, has 23 scouts in the NBA here to see him tonight. And there's Spencer inside the arc for the first bucket. I thought he should have shot it on the catch, but good patience and a little crab dribble even knocked down that little 12 footer. And DJ Davis, he's the hot hand for Butler. Now that you see Irvine transfer, known for shooting, but he can put it on the deck and get to the rim and finish with either hand around the rim. Only six foot one, but his speed allowed him to be able to get an angle past Tristan Thompson, two and who able to draw the contact and finish. Fonz, when you're scouting this guy Woo. for UConn, it's like, okay, we got to run him off the line. But then he does that to you. <laughs> yes, and he has all of the moves in the painted area. He's got the floaters, the banker. He can really score the rock. Back I think UConn going forward, I think they have to post them. They've, their guards are 6'5 and 6'6 UConn against two guards who are barely six feet tall. So let's see if they can take advantage of that sometime with this game. Castle, who's on the ball here, he's who they want to post up. Mm -hmm. Brooks got out on uh, the closeout on Spencer. He can break your heart with his jump shooting. There's Newton late in the clock. Down to three seconds. Banging inside. Not here. And the rebound for Thomas. Three ball. In and out. Rebound for Johnson off the Alexander miss. That Fonz will be a big bonus for Butler if they can get Alexander to start hitting some outside shots. Yeah, without a doubt. I like this. Give him room and just shoot it over the top. Yeah, the big guard, Castle, tags the first foul on Jalen Thomas. Yes, Castle at 6'6 on the interior. I love the fact that they were posting him up against a 6'1 DJ Davis. And now you force Butler to try to have to scheme differently because if he can continue to score, now you have to double him. And now that's a big guard looking over the top to be able to find guys open on the weak side. I like the early attack by Danny Hurley. Probably going to see a lot of that based on what he said this morning. You know, we're hanging out down by the circle at the hotel. There's a bunch of NBA personnel in town. The Hawks are here, mm -hmm. the Atlanta Hawks. But a lot of the NBA personnel, not there to see the NBA game. They're there to 
see the guys on Danny Hurley's team, including <laughs> Castle, who could be one and done. Yeah, he's just so good. Obviously, once he learns to be able to knock down a steady three-point shot, one for nine so far in the year, he's going to be hard to deal with because he's explosive vertically, horizontally, can change speeds, change direction, and can really finish around the rim. Coming off his best game since he returned from a knee injury and a travel on Posh Alexander. The aforementioned <laughs> Steph Castle doing a really nice job of moving his feet. That's what Danny Hurley talked about today, is that he's a much better one-on-one -on -one defender than people give him credit for. That's Posh Alexander, one of the speediest guards in the Big East. Can bruise you a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. Castle down on this end, coming off 14 points, 7 rebounds. And a win against DePaul on the tape. Floater, no. Johnson way upstairs, guy for the offensive rebound. That was a big issue for Butler in their last game, but no second chance shot. Davis, three. And that's staying with the Bulldogs. You can tell DJ Davis, man, he was just salivating at the mouth. Got a wide open three in transition that he's been knocking down as of late. 16 of 31 from three over his last seven games. What's that long miss? Is that a little crowd juice behind that shot? No question about it. Davis got this capacity crowd on its feet with that and one. But Butler ahead, ahead of this first time out. He's got Johnson the big on him. Davis with the quickness advantage, forced to give up and the floater for Jalen Thomas. Because of UConn recognizing that there was a mismatch off the dribble, all four of the heads staring at the basketball, and that allowed Jalen Thomas, one and white, to be able to sneak in the gap. Really nice pass by DJ Davis. Doing a lot of things well on offense right now. DJ Davis and Spencer can do that from pretty much any spot on the floor. Yeah, a little screen on the weak side and decided to go underneath that screen. You cannot go underneath the screen on the 46% three-point field goal shooter Cam Spencer, number one in the Big East from three. And putting in a little extra work at the end of shoot around today. The last guy out on the floor for UConn. And Spencer had the defense on Brooks. We'll go to the free throw line after the timeout competitive start. DJ Davis more than just a three-point shooter. The ability to put it on the deck and a good number one Nova. Wow. And it'll be Pierre Brooks at the free throw line for Butler. Top score for the dogs. Mm -hmm. Michigan State transfer. Four points, two rebounds last year at Michigan State. Needed a little bit of a change and getting a great opportunity here. And I love what he's done so far. He has a tendency to settle for the jump shot. He's been putting it down and getting to the rack. We saw him get an offensive rebound, put back off of the shot, and they're able to get to the foul line. That's a guy who I think can get to the foul line a lot more because of that power and physicality that he has off the bounce. You know Pierre Brooks is powerful when you watch him on the stage, but then you get toward side with him at shoot around, and your eyes even got a little wide this morning. A lot more athletic than you think, too. Davis with the intercept, but Spencer took it back, and Caravan short. Tight to the rim. Yeah, Andre Screen, number 23, and White at 7 1, discouraged that shot. Landon Moore checking it at the timeout. And Davis on net that time. Danny Hurley talked in today in shoot around when they switched to make sure you come shoulder to shoulder and up. Miss Reed right there created that wide open shot. Strong take for Newton. Well, Davis had that yeah. maybe crowd influence long miss before, not here. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be a switch, and you have to switch up and in. Decided to go underneath, did Tristan Newton, and you cannot do that against D.J. Davis. Shooting 39% from three and has been white hot over the last six games. Put five of those things down Woo. in the last game against St. Kilo's. Well, Fonz, this is not a guy in this loud environment at Hinkle, mm -hmm. Tristan Newton, that you're going to hear his voice break through the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit deceptive as far as his body language. He, he wants it bad, but you're not going to hear him speak. Oh, well, he lets his game speak for himself. Second leading scorer on this team at 15 points a game. Seven rebounds, ninth in the Big East, and he's the point guard, by the way. 
and six assists, third in the Big East. So a guy who's already had three triple doubles in his career here with UConn. Two last year, one this year. And hey, if you're a UConn fan and you thought he'd be shut out again, no worries, he's not. <laughs> Danny Hurley said he might be motivated to drop 50 after he shut out last game. Brooks and three. The patience on the double team, the kick out, the slow rotation from UConn created that wide open look for DJ Davis. Caravan answers back. Alex Caravan on three. Single side pick and pop. No communication on the switch created that open angle for Caravan to get that one off. Tough guard. Brooks. I knew it was off. Followed it and a foul on the Bulldogs. So that comes with the power of Pierre Brooks, the offensive foul. Indeed. I love what Andre Screen did here. Got rid of it immediately. I thought Davis should have reversed it right away. He didn't hesitate it for a second, and that froze the rotating defender, creating a wide open opportunity. And Pierre Brooks knocks it down. That's beautiful offense by Butler. Bulldogs have come to play tonight. Zon Diara in for the first time for UConn. More checking him here. Spencer off the ball screen. Bombs it up and a slam for Samson Johnson. They froze the help defender, Posh Alexander, just with a little look that way to take away his tag and able to throw that over the top. That was beautiful. Spencer's under control. Starting his third straight game with flinging out. Spencer. Short on the three. Rebound for Butler. One and done with Landon Moore. One of the big keys in this game for Butler is do what they are really good at doing, taking care of the ball. They do not give the ball away much. And so far, they've been doing a really nice job against that full court pressure, man pressure of UConn. Teleport into the lane. Solo ball through the back door for Spencer. Give up Johnson for two more. That's so good. Cam Spencer driving to his left hand. Brought Andre Screen 23 and White to the basketball. And Samson Johnson filled in behind him beautifully for that score. Alexander hasn't been able to get going yet. 0 for 2. Teleport with the left. And a wrestle for it. And the arrow is with UConn in the jump ball. It's a shot we saw Telford working on here a lot today for about a half an hour. But I'd like to see him get back to his strong hand and to try to finish over the top because they're going to need him to score the basketball for them to beat the four team in the country tonight. People watching him before the game, mm -hmm. how many he was taking with his left hand, yes. Telford. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinking, is, is he ambidextrous? He, he is, and he can make that shot. But when you're playing against some taller guys that can jump and got a little bounce and link to him, you got to go to your strength. And his strength is finishing with his right hand. UConn on a 7 0 run over the last two plus minutes. He felt Butler without a field goal for a little bit longer than that, almost three minutes. And this small look, Caravan playing the five, and it's tapped away from him. Brooks banging his way in, and the quick hands for Spencer. He leads the break for the Huskies. Caravan. This game's got a little pace to it. I like it. Into the post, and Spencer called for the foul. We're cruising up and down the court at Hinkle in Indy. One point game. 10-9. I mean, they didn't score the first four minutes, and then all of a sudden they won the game by 30. <laughs> and that's what they can do to you because they pick you off and play you 94 feet, and that pressure can be can wear you out over time. And so a team that's nice little back there. That's pretty. 
Inzie Bizjack on the receiving end of it. Yeah, low curl cut along the baseline, and he was able to cut over the top. Got no help on the weak side, was why he was able to get so wide open. So there's some of that supporting cast you're just talking about for Butler outside of Brooks and Davis. Getting some scoring from another guy. The solo ball is stripped. More in there with the theft. Slows it down for the Bulldogs in a game that's gone up and down the last four or five minutes. Moore going the other side of the floor. Blocked by Johnson and got it back. Brooks wanted to post instead playing outside. Now he's loving it. A little bully ball in his foul. Love it. He has such a size and strength advantage on Hassan Jara, who's 6'2", have to play a big bully in 6'6", 240 pound Pierre Brooks, and he does what you should do. Get down into the painted area, draw some contact, and get to that foul line. I've been really impressed with his attack off the bounce in this game. Our conversation with Butler and Coach Nathana, you, you brought this up, you said, Coach, Correct me if I'm wrong. Pierre Brooks needs to go to the free throw line a little bit more. Yes. And he said, absolutely, you're right. He, again, he has a tendency to settle for the jump shot because he's an excellent shooter, and you can understand why. But with a body like that and the ability to put it on the back, he can punish people in the paint. And that's exactly what we've seen so far in this game. Four in a row for Brooks and the Bulldogs out of the timeout. Newton. Johnson with the pack. Tristan Newton, he, that kid has eyes out the back of his head. He sees so much, and he was able to hold the help defender for a quick second, which allowed Samson Johnson to get open at the rim. Oftentimes, that cut is open at the rim late. Tristan Newton read it beautifully. The lob into screen, help comes, and so does a foul. What you're talking about with Newton. Let's watch Tristan, Tristan Newton here, number two in the blue. Watch him get to the right, and then all of a sudden he baits Andre Screen, 23 in white, to come up just a little bit, and that opens up the angle right there for Samson Johnson. And you talk about a pogo stick leaper, that kid can flat out jump, and he punched that thing over the top. That was really pretty. Screen smooth on the first. Mm -hmm. Danny Hurley, a few contact coach, really excited about what Samson Johnson gave them a couple of games ago against St. John's. Of course, you don't want to be without Donovan Klingon. For sure. It could also be a lottery pick, just like Castle, but when they get him back, they're going to have two post players that can beat you. You're building bench depth, and it's great for Samson Johnson because he's a starter his first game, sophomore year, had a stress reaction in his foot, missed 19 games, finally returned, but the rotation was set. So it's nice for him to get this opportunity here because he's a fantastic player. He's going to be a really key player for UConn re to repeat. Stewart bags a three. Jalen Stewart a three. Dribble penetration, you don't help off the weak side corner. Butler helped off, and they made them pay. Well, UConn has not been a good three-point shooting team, and Stewart had only hit one three this year before that. Yep. And UConn feels like the better days are coming from beyond the arc. Pierre Brooks is open in the post. He's got to get the ball. And instead, it's Telfort with the ball by. But the recovery was a little bit late from Johnson. Goaltending. This is the versatility of Telford. Undersized four, but his ability to be able to be at that foul line area where they like to isolate him. And if you come up close to him, he's able to get by you. He's able to get the angle to get to the rim. That's how he's able to get that shot off. They need more of that from Telford because he's been absent over the last few games. Last three games, nothing sticking for him. Nope. You're gonna beat the number four team in the country. You probably need at least ten plus. All hands on deck. A poke out for one of the best in the Big East at doing that, but UConn gets it right back. After Alexander had hands on. Newton short follow goes down for Caravan. Yeah, Butler a little slow to get back to the lane. That allowed Caravan to be able to get a free run to the front of the rim. Deep position, and it goes down at the left for Thomas. 
That's really nice because most bigs catch that basketball in that situation and would travel. But Jalen Thomas showing great poise, able to get two feet set and throw a little lefty hook over the top. Well, a big part of Thatmata's game plan tonight, mm -hmm. having a post presence mm -hmm. without Donovan Klingon down there, out injured for UConn for the third straight game. A lot of the scoring for Butler comes from guys outside of the post. Mm -hmm. Davis with the intercept into the hands of Brooks. It's one of the few times that you'll see Tristan Newton telegraph a pass. I like this. He's got to go to work. Banging bodies all the way in here, Brooks. Too big, too strong. That's available to him all night long. And that just makes this place more and more raucous. Davis. Oh, yeah. Stewart can't stop the crowd noise. And a foul down low on Thomas. If you said anything to me the last minute and a half, I have no idea what you said. <laughs> Keep it and meet him quickly on the other side. Danny just wants them to be physical with him. So far, they've not been very physical with DJ Davis, and he's been able to get loose for open shots. Dan Hurley was at game speed as far as his vocals on the shoot around. <laughs> Talking about just that, saying you gotta be a man, you gotta get through those streams. That's another turnover by UConn. Seven turnovers in this game have led to eight Butler points. They're usually really good taking care of the basketball, but the switching defensive Butler has taken them completely out of their offensive strategy. That's a foul. Top got pushed. Yeah. And now that's going to force UConn to go small. So it should be Samson Johnson, 35 in blue, with four guards around him. I like to see them play a little faster with this lineup in. You sit and the rest of the way. Have to. Davis on the fadeaway. Right now, Butler's getting anything they want on the offensive end. UConn's usually the aggressor on the defensive end. That's not been here consistently in the first half. Nine in a row for Butler over the last two minutes. Influencing the game on this end, fun. The switches have taken UConn out of their offensive rhythm. Spencer off on the three. And saved by Davis, but into the hands of UConn. And that ends the run with Castle. Mm -hmm. Heads up play by Castle could reap the flight of the ball, putting himself in perfect position to be able to come up with that one. And that was a big basket because the momentum was clearly on the other side. Look, with Cam Spencer right now, guarding Pierre Brooks, number 21 in white, they've got to take him back down to the post. They got it out wide. Davis. Getting to wonder would Butler ever miss again? They finally did. This will be down to the ground, though. Samson Johnson got caught there. He knew that DJ Davis had some room to be able to get that shot off, and so he kind of stood in the spot. Andre Screen, on the other hand, 23 and White, just beeline straight to the front of the rim, doing exactly what he should do, and able to come up with that offensive rebound. Opportunity for two free throws here. We just saw Dan Hurley, UConn head coach, turn to his assistant, Luke Murray. It seems like he asked him, who do we go with now? Johnson just picked up his second. Caravan has two fouls. So they're going to go with Jalen Stewart in what's a real small lineup now. Yeah. And they should be able to play faster with this group and should be able to drive it. And whoever's screen, number 23 and White's guarding, that's the guy who's basically isolate and trying to get to the right. Tallest player on the floor for UConn right now is 6'7". Open up the floor and let Castle go. We got 
the 7-1 Andre stream down there against this small lineup for UConn. Kick it out, Spencer. Can't come out. Yeah, I thought that was a mistake. I thought they should have opened up the floor five out and allowed Castle to be able to attack screen. You've got to make him pay for being big out there on the floor. Alexander, give up, Davis. Spencer ran him off. And Alexander, final pass. Here comes UConn downhill with ball Love and it. a foul. Love it. And a big thump from Ball. That's more what you're calling for with, with this guy. smaller lineup on the floor. UConn's got to play faster. And I love the fact that Solomon Ball was able to get out in transition. So good. Tremendous athlete with a 45 inch vertical leap. They've got to attack off the bounce. Yeah, Butler will go, should go with Telford now at the five spot and take. Oh, no, they're actually going to stay big. Going Yusuf Sigari. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I thought UConn missed an opportunity, though. With screen out there on the floor, Garden Castle. Big free throws there by Solomon Ball. Sigari, the fourth big, technically, when Klingon is healthy. Caravan really a four, but he's played a little bit of five. Johnson. And Caravan with two fouls for UConn. Davis short and recovered by Castle. Really nice block out by Sigari. Oh, ball was nudged back by his own guy. <laughs> yeah, but did you see how high he was? That's that 45-inch vertical leap we were talking about. Woo. Davis high now. Cam Spencer, number 12 in blue, has got to get going on the offensive end for UConn. One for five from three. Mm -hmm. Castle mid-range. Look at We said it earlier. Castle's got fours and fives guarding him out on the floor, and he's a point guard. UConn's got to use his ability to be able to create his own offense to make Butler have to make a change. There's no four or five out there on the floor for Butler that can guard Castle. Green into the post. Through a double. Stayed with it. Got his own. And got fouled. Wow. There were already so many interesting matchups in this game, but especially now with the Yukon Pigs and Fouls. Points. Big Andre screen. Uh, played at Bucknell. Lefty, soft hands, really good footwork around the rim. He and my youngest son, Walter, who graduated in three years from Bucknell, had a chance to play together. What a nice, nice kid who happens to be super skilled on that block as well. He lit up when you walked into the gym this morning. That's my man. And two and two at the line. Three, fascinating three and a half minutes coming up here. Kapke comes in for screen who comes out because of the foul trouble for UConn. Mm -hmm. Johnson and Caravan both with two fouls. Both have sit and mm -hmm. sat since they picked up their second. Castle, Stefan Castle, number five in blue, has Telford Gardner. They can go back to it if they want. And Newton takes the contact. That counts in the foul. Yeah. Coming off that ball screen, DJ Davis never got him squared up, which allowed Newton to be able to attack to his left. And another big guard at 6'5 who can take the contact and finish around the rim. Well, I love watching this kid play. He's dynamic in every aspect of the game on the offensive end. Fair hedge to make, right? That he's not going to have a score in this game the rest of the year. But that probably not. <laughs> did, like, did have seven assists against the ball. I mean, dude's got three triple doubles, and he's been at UConn. This is not his second year. As Jack leaves it, and the foul. And we've seen that 
consistently on Butler's drives tonight. The rotation guy after the double team has been late filling the hold. You can see Castle late coming down. That's his job to be able to tag and take that away. He's late out there and standing out by the free throw line, and that allowed Kapke to be able to go down in front of the rim and get fouled. UConn just a little slow and late on their rotations. Their on ball is good, but their rotations and helps have been late here in the first half. And a one and two for Kapke. Came in, pulled off the bench, having not played until the final three minutes of this half. So Butler by six, inside three to go until halftime. Diara coming off a good shooting night, and he turned it over. And that's been the story in this game for UConn. I think that's eight turnovers now for UConn, and they've given up ten points off of those turnovers. No offensive foul. Davis is saying he got pushed. And I was shielded, couldn't quite see it. Must have been right before that shot yeah. that he thought Diara pushed him. Yeah, it had to be. But, well, you heard Dan Hurley in that huddle when he took you inside talking about you can play for an illegal screen. Mm -hmm. Not exactly what he drew up, but they <laughs> did get the offensive foul. Newton can't cash in. Butler cold the last four minutes. No field goals. And still nothing right on the doorstep with Davis. So been able to hold on to the lead down on this end. And Spencer fell down. Newton says, I got this. And tags in a three. How clutch is he? We've seen him time and time again knock down big shots, and we saw it in the championship game last year, especially with Donovan clinging out. The bigs on foul trouble, and so the guards are going to have to take over this game on the offensive end for the Huskies. Well, UConn's had the clamps on down in this end for going on five minutes, mm -hmm. 440 since the last field goal for Butler. There's nothing there for Telford. Butler loves to put Posh Alexander down in the post area because of his vision and ability to be able to pass. What a beautiful pass in front of the run by Cap for Kapke. Castle mid-range. I'll just settle. He's got to drive in. Second chance at it, though, and Stewart puts it back. Jim Stewart. Stewart's giving them a really nice lift in terms of his energy off the bench. And Stewart's been an Alex Caravan understudy in his freshman year. Same size. Similar positionally, had to play big minutes. Caravan in foul trouble, and Davis will count that with the gold tap. Yeah, I thought Stewart got away with a foul on DJ Davis as he turned the corner. I'll tell you what, we've seen every aspect. I mean, when you read about DJ Davis, everyone talks about his shooting. Nobody talks about his playmaking ability, and we've seen his whole bag tonight. Alex Caravan back in with the two fouls. You like this? Probably gonna do a little offense defense here. So do you like it? I do like it. Yeah. I figure. I do. Need shooting on the floor. Into the post, he turned it over. So they'll have to keep Caravan on the floor defensively. We're gonna attack him. They won't get revelation in this first half. Open up the floor. Castle has Kapke guarding him. Open up the floor and allow him to drive it. Shot clock still on. Telfort switches. Newton short. Battle for the loose board. And the first half has run out of steam. 
Butler's brought the fight on both ends of the floor. DJ Davis has been exceptional with 13 points in this game. Remember, he was a get to the foul line. He's been white hot. Those two guys are combined for 24 of the 42 Butler Bulldog points. They were exceptional in the first half. To beat this UConn team, they've got to be really good in the second half. Butler with the lead at halftime, looking for their first top five win. It's that magical day here just ahead of the new year in 2017 when they beat number one Nova. Yeah, that pass was there, but Pasha Alexander didn't get enough air underneath it. They easily steal that one. He's got a, mis he's got a mismatch inside. Spencer off the pivot, and it drops down. It's ready. So many of the guards can make that shot these days. A hard little dribble to the painted area to the Big East, then a reverse pivot over the right shoulder. Really well done by Cam Spencer. Now, UConn comes in winning five of their last six since that loss at Kansas. Got some guys banged up. Looking for three and one in the Big East to start the year. Here's Thomas into the post. Left hand no. And a second chance. Telford rips it out of there. Two stars of that first half. Davis and Brooks combining with Davis. Not a wild miss. So foul trouble late in that half for UConn. Had him play small most of the final eight minutes of the half. With Samson Johnson back in there in the post with Caravan, who also had two fouls at that four spot. Newton getting guys organized. Takes it himself. A little heavy on it. Rebound for Brooks. Yeah, that's a bad shot in the settle. He's got to get in the lane. He had a 6-1 guard on him to get in and either rise up in the lane or cause a help defender to come over and find an open guy. Didn't like that possession at all. And the top two scoring offenses in the Big East as far as points a game. Both over 80 points a night. Telfort gets the bounce. Using that inside shoulder to bump Samson Johnson 35 and blue to create a little extra space to get that shot off. I think there was a foul there. No. 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 Legal. Legal ball. Legal space. <laughs> Foul on Alexander. What do you think the temperature was like from that man Stan Hurley at halftime? Oh, there's no paint left <laughs> on the walls in that locker room. <laughs> Guarantee you that. Is there noise or is there some scratch? <laughs> <laughs> a little both. Uh, Newton's foul. Let's we'll see what happens in that case when you get your guards attacking the fours and the fives of Butler. Anytime UConn's been able to do that in the first half, they've been able to get something good. They've got to continue to make Butler pay for putting their fours and fives on their guards who are so good off the dribble and getting in the lane. Got to do more of it. And it gets Newton to the free throw line. It was a fun shot we just got. You had, you had Dan Hurley four screen. And then in the background, you had his assistant, Luke Murray, who had the scout for this game. Both shouting different things, different directions. <laughs> with a lot of passion. Yes. Coaching is a team effort. Yes. <laughs> what a fine two years ago for Danny Hurley getting Tristan Newton from East Carolina. And he's been a steady force and influence in this team. And for them to repeat, he's going to be—he's going to have to be really good and take a strong leadership role. Even though he's quiet, a strong leadership role with his production on the floor. And he's certainly done that to this point of the season. And he's challenged him. Mm -hmm. First thing he said to us today: Newton's got to play better. Mm -hmm. Putting up really good numbers overall in the year. Once more from him as of late. Delport bangs in. So got it with the hook. You can't let a guy dribble the basketball eight, nine times in the post area without coming and scraping down. Too easy inside there for Telford. Butler loves to see that. Shooting at 50% after a dry couple of games. Yeah, you got to get a guard scraping down to make him uncomfortable. That was way too easy. Newton working with Johnson. Got the big on him. And there was contact there, falling away. And Caravan saves it. Spencer fills the lane. And it just ripped right out of there. Thomas didn't even block it as much as he just.
stole that right out of Spencer's hand. With a bloody lip as well. Cam Spencer usually gets down in here and draws a lot of attention, and that just shows you how flustered UConn is right now. They had three blue shirts in and around Cam Spencer, no spacing on the offense, and Jalen Thomas being strong and physical with a bloody lip to take care of that basketball. And Dan Hurley is shouting at Paul Sells, the official. And Spencer with the takeaway. All the long, coasting in for two. He saw that coming all the way and just shot the gap on that one. Really good read defensively by Cam Spencer. Asked you about the temperature in the UConn locker room. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some more heat on that sideline right now. I can feel it all the way across the court on my side. Two straight turnovers here for Butler. This one for Castle, one-on-one -on -one with Alexander. How about the balance and the poise from the freshman. In transition. I like this kid. Bad Mata for Butler warned his team about this. Mm -hmm. Most teams turn live ball turnovers into points. Yes. With UConn, it's almost automatic. Wild shot. Yep. Down to Johnson. Wild shots are like turnovers. And here comes Castle. Mm -hmm. Three in a row for UConn yep. in the open court. Let's go. Let's go. You're playing against UConn. A bad shot is like a stepped up and responded. Now the real question, what did he say, Fonz? I'm not allowed to say that on air. <laughs> this is a G-rated production here, partner. Castle pays off the end one. Ties this game up with seven straight points. For Coach Hurley and the Huskies. I'll go G-rated. Heck yeah, let's go. There you go. That's what he said, basically. There you go. Kill language. Family friendly, Monzo Ellis. Let's go. Well, it's been off of the turnovers for Butler. Love it. And Moore slips through and got past the shot blocker. Yeah, Cam Spencer at times struggles keeping the basketball in front. And that's what I was talking about earlier that UConn needs to do when their guards find the bigs on them, that they've got to drive that basketball. Cam Spencer got a little too close, which opened that lane for Moore to be in the top. Well done. Physical defense from Davis. Caravan three. You have to be careful to not overhelp. Pierre Brooks overhelp, which opened that lane for Caravan to be able to knock that three down. First lead in a while, Fonz, mm -hmm. for UConn. Doing it off their defense. It was 23 22 the last time they led. And that's on Castle with Brooks. I'm hanging in there one more time. Yeah, I do on Castle. Well, I said it earlier, and I'll continue to say it. Number 21 in white has to get some post touches against the smaller guards of UConn. There's no one, one through three, I would argue one through four, that can guard Pierre Brooks when he gets in the lane. He's got a five on him here. Mm -hmm. This is outside Give the lane, room. though. Give him room. There's the five-man Johnson. To Step settle. back. To settle. That Mata just kind of looked on, hands on hips. Nothing to say. First lead since the middle part of the first half for UConn. Butler went on a run right after UConn took that short lead. This match inside, I like it. Take your time. Johnson on the shorter more. Couldn't hit. And off his face. The ball ricocheted off Johnson's face. And a foul on UConn with Johnson going down to the floor. Danny Hurley thought Johnson got hit on the he, shot. He, I was he did. It was just I by the ball. See it. Yeah. But I like the awareness here in the second half early to try to find the mismatches on the floor offensively for UConn, something that they didn't do with any consistency in the first half. We're going to roll with Samson Johnson with the three foul. Mm -hmm. Moore has given Butler some flashes this year, being a dominant scorer. Slip past Spencer a couple trips ago. Johnson came out to hedge, now working deep, late clock. Help from Spencer. Four to shoot, gotta go. Moore forcing in, and Spencer holds him off this time. Yeah, oftentimes when you don't take the first available shot against a good defense, you struggle, and that's exactly what happened there. Caravan hit from there earlier, not this time. 
Ancy, Butler proud. Nice move. And foul shots. Up ahead for Telfort. That's what makes Telfort so hard to guard as an undersized four has the ability to be able to go one way, drop, step back the other. Able to get fouled and get to the line. They've desperately needed number 11 in white to get on track. Five of 19 and one of six from three in their last two losses. For them to pull it off against one of the best teams in the country. He's got to be good here in the second half. But for this recent stretch, everything that left his hand was falling. Mm -hmm. Brooks out, so does Caravan with the uh, the exit. Three fouls on both Caravan and on Johnson. Mm -hmm. For UConn. You look up and see either of those guys guarding you. Your mind has to be, I'm going to attack it to the rim. For Dan Hurley, how long you sit in Caravan? About eight minute mark. Okay. Not to say probably eight minute mark. Under eight. Johnson stays. Caravan sits with three fouls. Belfort deep in the stance on Castle. Splits two. Spencer juggle. And not the night where he's hit at a high rate, but Castle fighting to get that offensive rebound. Newton triple. Spencer another loose ball. Hands off for Newton in the stream. Johnson finishes. Since UConn has brought the fight here in the second half. Been able to come up with steals off their defense, able to get out in transition, get on the offensive glass. Whatever Danny Hurley said to them at halftime, it's gotten their attention because they've been exceptional over the last six and a half minutes of this game. Well, and the guy that's been described on the floor is most similar to the head coach Dan Hurley is Cam Spencer. Mm -hmm. And he looked like he had steam out of his ears. Like I said, coach, on that trip. Yes. Butler has gone without a field goal last three minutes. And Paul Sells says, wave it off. That's going to be a foul on uh, Samson Johnson, and that's number four. Yeah, that's big. So now it's going to force UConn to have to go small with Caravan at the five, which is not a bad thing necessarily. The next time UConn has the basketball on the offensive end, they should go to that little side ball screen action and slip him out and allow him to be able to knock down another three. So forget eight minute mark for Caravan. That, that, that changes the calculus. <laughs> Unless they get in foul trouble. <laughs> well, he didn't give us that. Go on, Tons. It's a tough shot. And Caravan back on the floor at the rebound. In there to shoot. And drill it. You cannot lose track of where he is on the floor, especially as a trailer. Jalen Thomas went to get some help and was around the foul line area. Deep three, wide open from Caravan. See if they go at Caravan with the three fouls. Moore did. Caravan forced to give up. Moore drives in on Visa Thomas. That counts. Plus one. Because of the inability to contain the dribble. Well, he was meaning it at that time from a defensive standpoint and locating shooters. But when you have a guy like that who's picked up his third foul, and if he finds himself in one of those guards out there, Butler, they've got to drive him and expose him and try to pick up that fourth foul. And Thomas, the guy that he was addressing, hits the free throw to complete the end one for Butler. Good balance tonight for UConn. Yes. Five guys with eight plus points, and the turnover for Castle. Well, Butler trying to take a lead back. I like this. Brooks bangs his way in. Every single time he touches the rock, he has to be thinking of attacking off the bounce. He's been in an attack mentality for most part of this game, and I don't think he does it enough. That big body should be able to get to the lane and get to the line at least seven, eight times a game. Athletic, strong, shifty. Yeah, Brooks on a mission tonight off the bounce. Bonzi might be here a lot more. 
because Butler's already in the bonus. Mm -hmm. Can't know, and when you put a team in the bonus, you can't settle for jump shots. You've got to put your head down and get to the rack. And this is a UConn team that's really good with their stunts and their helps, and you may be able to find guys open on the weak side of the floor. back in front after a 15-4 UConn run trying to start another that's so good they went to set a little wide pin and he slipped it and when he slipped it the extra defender had to give a little help opening up a wide open opportunity from the corner Newt knocks it down the ball's feeling good coming out of the yard mm -hmm. huh? three or four left settle it's a settle he's got to drive it and Thomas is tied up, and the arrow is with Utah. Let's watch the right side of the floor here. Caravan goes to set a little screen, and they, they set this little screen. He slips it. He was setting a flare screen and slipped it, and that's what they were working on this morning, and it forces the help defender to have to make a decision. Indecision there created that wide-open look for him to knock that down. That's well executed by the Huskies. Oh, the use of the window for Spencer. Well done. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to switch that action. No one communicated, and that's how he was able to get to the baseline side and knock that one down off the glass. You don't want Cam Spencer to get going. Even on a night where he struggled to shoot it from outside, one is six. He's into double digits. Brooks cashes it. It's a much better rhythm three coming off dribble penetration than a kick. Diara with the slice. And notice who he had guarding him, Jalen Thomas, a big. When those guards of UConn find those mismatches, they've got to drive it. Really good recognition there by Jara. That is uh, not an island Jalen Thomas wants mm, to live on. Me neither. <laughs> Take it three of us. Yes, sir. This Jack. One more. Moore kept the possession. Down to three for Brooks. Hops in. And loses it. Yeah, he got fouled on his way in. He should be at the foul line. He has been in attack mode. And steps. Down in a catcher's <laughs> position. Yes. Agonizing yes. over that call. Well, they missed Cam Spencer, who was wide open in the right corner there. And a little indecision by Caravan, whether to shoot it or drive it, created that travel. Looks like he was ready to catch a ball. <laughs> he's pretty flexible now. He, he's bent down like that with his back up against the stanchion, writing some things down during shoot around. He had to be there about five, ten minutes. Yeah. Put me there, I wouldn't be able to get back up. Nice clean. Love it. Delport with the spin. Yeah, mismatch inside with Stefan Castle. 6 6 guard. I love the recognition of the mismatch. Here comes the crowd. Four on the clock. Tan drills it. That's a big shot by Steph Castle, who coming into this game was only one of nine from the three-point line. How about the poise from the freshman? The confidence to knock that one down. Going off the range with 23 NBA scouts here tonight. A lot of them to see him. Telfort, pass deflected. It's a good call. Offense. Hassan Jara, number 10 in blue, made that possible. He saw that his teammate was on an island with a big, came down to give a little help, got a little hand on that pass, and then Telford, watch this, got a hand on that, and Telford pushed Castle off with his left arm. That's a really good call by the official. Two big plays, back-to-back -back trips for Castle. Newton, way off. Yara follows, and he's banged down. Second on Alexander. Yeah, it's a little dribble, and they want to try to help off of Posh Alexander, who's not a three-point shooter. 
that's part of the strategy. UConn, you saw the graphic with yes. their record in the Big East the last two years. A lot of those losses came in January last year. They lost six of eight off the 14 and 0 start. And we'll go right back to break. <laughs> Look at Danny. <laughs> I just drew it up. Dude, my man. Well, hey, DJ Davis is the star yeah. of the first half for Butler. He does not have a point for the Bulldogs, now trailing by four. Well, they come out and face guarded him and to take him out of the game. So the way you get him open is use him as a screener. Should be able to find some open alleys. Yeah, thrown right away, and we're always on Dan Hurley reaction watch. That was just a look of all. Yes. Design play coming out of the timeout. <laughs> Bane of the coach's existence when you turn it over. Here's Davis. He's been held scoreless, and he missed the bunny. You know, couldn't quite get his foot. He lost his balance when he turned the corner. So he had 13 in the first half. Butler had the lead. UConn turned it around. Big part of a 15-4 run to get back in front. Newton going to work late in the shot clock. UConn should toast Castle. Caravan on that. Or oh, just tell Alex Caravan to take a little sidestep. <laughs> a little dribble to his left and knock down a three. That'll cure a lot of things. That works too. Efficient night for Caravan. He's hit four threes. Mm. Has extended it to seven. Double teams coming. Shot fake. Davis finally gets going. Second half. Davis. And notice how it happened. Got a little post touch, allowed him to relocate and finally get some airspace to knock that shot down. Because for them to win this game, he's going to have to be able to make shots for Butler. Big feeling shifter on that shot. UConn had taken their biggest lead of the half. And then Newton with one right back from two. Able to put his shoulder into Jalen Thomas to create some separation to get that shot off. Telfort blocked, but there's a foul. Wow. And with Caravan right back into that huddle, he's yelling at Castle. What was he telling him? Get back a little faster? Well, a little bit of that, and, and you got to give Telford a lot of credit, is he's recognizing his mismatch out there on the floor. And anytime he sees Castle, he's aggressively trying to get to the rim. Caravan's trying to tell him that help is coming. Just keep him in his spot and don't allow him any easy angles to get to the rack. Something to watch now, too. Castle has three fouls. Mm -hmm. Stewart out. Spencer in. Samson Johnson, the starting five for UConn with Donovan Klingon out on the bench with four fouls. Delford, perfect at the line. Mm -hmm. Five of 19 over the last two losses. He's been really good in this game. 12 points here and an efficient 4 of 7 from the floor. F. Butler in touch to the surging UConn Husky side in the second half. Five on the shot clock. Yeah, I like it. Newton at 6'5". Gives a little crossover dribble to D.J. Davis at 6'1". And I think those bigger guards of UConn for the remainder of this game have to attack the smaller guards of Butler. That's a really good read, but it was the crossover dribble that created the separation for Tristan Newton to be able to get to the lane. Well, it's different 
with that concept and how Newton's going to do it and how Castle's going to do it. Castle a little bit more comfortable and a true post up. Yes. And even so, Castle is catching at times their fours and fives of Butler. I still think UConn can open up the floor and let him use his speed to get in the lane and make a play. Because he's so good at getting to the rack. And if he draws an additional defender, he's unselfish in making a play. Remember, he's got 14 in this game as well. Ten of them coming in the second half. He's been spectacular here in the second half. Castle. Melfort. Caravan had to be careful. And still got to stop. I thought Telford should have gone up and through his chest. Made it away a little bit there. Diara gets to the rim. Biggest lead of the second half for UConn. And this will be sideline out for Butler. Butler basketball. Danny Hurley has been on Hassan Jara to give them leadership, not only with his voice, but with his effort and energy out there on the floor. He's quietly been really good in this game. He's got seven. Brooks knocks it in. And a timeout for Butler. The top 25 teams in the country that are playing tonight mm. are part of this doubleheader. This game that's had 11 lead changes, five ties, eight points aside. That's been the biggest margin. Right after this, you get Purdue and Illinois coming up. Brooks just hit the three. So out of the timeout, and that'll count. Telford hit it on the way down with Caravan into the rim. That's so good. Denny Hurley ran an action to create a miss because of the way Butler switches to create a mismatch inside with Caravan with DJ Davis. Ball goes over the top. A really nice pass from Stefan Castle. And a goal 10 opportunity for a three-point play here for Caravan. And that didn't connect on that. But the two extends it back to seven for UConn. Davis keeps the dribble alive. Got the foul on Caravan. Came off for that screen with a little dribble and then backed it up. And that froze Caravan. And then he used his burst to be able to get to his right side, able to draw contact and finish. That's four fouls now on Caravan. Tell you what, yeah, people refer to this kid as a shooter only. He's opened up his entire bag tonight. He's been terrific driving it and knocking down his three ball. He's been impressive on the offensive end for the Bulldogs. sides of the floor and that's usually what happens when it stays on one side a tough contested shot good defense there from Butler number four UConn being pushed Alexander jab three Three minutes. 
Sarabane's got a small one inside. He's got to get it. Big size advantage on Alexander. And that's a block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, Alexander felt he beat him to the spot. From my viewpoint, from my viewpoint, I didn't think... Head coach Dan Hurley has talked about that exact thing and how that feeling spreads throughout the entire mm -hmm. team. When Caravan plays well, yes. it empowers the five freshmen that he has around him. And when he's knocking down his three ball, it opens up the floor even more for dribble penetration from his guards. He's played a spectacular game. 19 points in this game now for Caravan. And an excellent foul shooter. Mm -hmm. Make it 20. D.J. Davis, number four in white. Pierre Brooks, 21 in white. These are the big scores in the first half. Davis, oh, nasty cross. Too strong on it. And UConn survives a nasty crossover. Yeah, I think D.J. Davis is a little tired, too, because that was a free basketball right there. He never made an attempt to go run that one down. Unusual for four in white. And you can see it on his face back on defense, too. Oh, Two minutes from the finish line. Castle to work. Get deep in the clock. And Newton is fouled. Davis right under him, sending Newton to the free throw line. That's four on DJ Davis. Stefan Castle was starting his little back down inside and I thought DJ Davis turned his head for a quick little second, which opened up the backside for Tristan Newton to be able to dive down. Never established the legal defensive guarding position. That's a good call by the official. Well, remember, defensively, Butler, that's why they went into half leading. Mm -hmm. well, one of the best offenses in the country, the 35. Yes. UConn has scored 45 in the second half. Started with their defense in that first four minutes of the game. They were able to get a steal, get out in transition. And they came out fired up on the defensive end. It's got to be Davis and Brooks here. Precious, precious possessions for Butler. Chasing six. Looking for a top five win for the first time since 2017. Telport, deep catch. Of the line for two. That's five on Caravan. He did that. He loves to be perfect tonight. Four of four at the line. Caravan, the, the production is obvious. Mm -hmm. But with a minute and a half left, hostile place to play. You can't forget about the emotional impact he has on these guys. Uh, the, the leadership that comes along with having been a key part of winning a national championship. They listen to his voice. We noticed that here in practice. So, so now you look to a guy like Tristan Newton, who is obviously the point guard, to provide leadership, emotional leadership out there on the floor for his team. Got to get number 23, Andrew Screen, involved in some screening action to see if he can get a switch in the mismatch. All of Indianapolis on its feet. Mm -hmm. Yara, step back. Swirls out. Spencer crashes in. And remember what that might have told us this morning. Those two losses, it was the little things. That was the little thing. That it's bonus time both ways as far as the foul situation. There is a tie-up. Well, there's going to be Butler ball. Yeah, they're going to switch all of that action. So usually the inside guy's open. Here's the switch. I talked about that nice recovery there by Pierre Brooks to get back out to Tristan Newton. Newton can take the game clock all the way down to 45 seconds. Five in the 
Buck, Spencer, handshake more. Spencer, a dagger three. We watched them hit four of those same ones after practice today. He was struggling on his shot early in practice. A high scoring game against number one of the country. It ended in a court storm. We'll have to do it from behind in these final 45 seconds. Try to beat UConn for the first time in Butler basketball history. Here it looks to the post. Davis. He's got an open look. Lost sight of him on, on, on that away screen. Made him pay. And it took only two seconds to get three. The Butler fans thought Castle stepped over. Mm -hmm. I do get it across with Diara. And the foul given by Moore. They got their best shooter about as quick as possible mm -hmm. and the best result possible for that <laughs> yes. and Butler. Yes. And I thought they were really smart about not fouling in the backcourt. They wanted to see if their defensive pressure could come up with a steal or a tie-up. But that's the benefit of having four guards out there on the floor for UConn. Jar able to get it and easily bring it across half court. Double bonus all the way for UConn. It's a 90% foul shooter sitting over there for UConn. Alex Caravan is fouled out of the game. Early push here. Look to try to get to the front of the rim. If you can't get to the front of the rim, you got to find DJ Davis, number four in white, and Pierre Brooks, 21 in white. They're their best three point shooters. Alexander, the point guard, a good driver, but it's been a quiet night. Mm -hmm. There's three points for Alexander, who has the ball here. He's looking for Davis. Diara, face gardener. Davis cross court skip and intercepted foul. Newton and Moore has foul. foul right away. Yeah, on the dribble penetration, he drew the additional help, and Tristan Newton did a great job of playing center fielder and reading his eyes. And once he saw the ball in the air, he just shot the gap and able to come up with that steal. Really, you talk about you, you want to, your experienced players to be able to make big plays and big time moments, and that was a big time defensive play there by number two in blue. And Newton takes the first. Yeah. Because this is going to be a tough loss for Butler, but Thad Mott is building something special here. The issue that they had last year is that group wasn't connected, not in sync with one another. He wants to go out and get more firepower, and you see a team here that scores the basketball really efficiently. The future's bright for this program. Belfort, quick take. That would have changed some things there. Wow. Clock stop is 16.8. Two at the line for Telford. Uh, 17 seconds, a lot of time. If you can make these two free throws, you want to try to trap it. And when they catch it, you don't want to foul right away. See if you can get a quick little tie up. If you don't get the tie up and they can get it across half court, you got to foul right away. building in year two of his mm -hmm. return to his alma mater. Yep. This guy at the line, Telford and Posh Alexander, yes. hasn't been featured a lot tonight. Mm -hmm. They've changed the feeling on the floor. Yes. There's a fire that Butler didn't have last year. Those guys flat out compete. Mm -hmm. Now some full court pressure. Try to get them to catch the basketball in one of those corners. And don't foul right away. Try to tie it up. Diara runs. And Alexander does foul quickly. Yeah, I'd like to see them get a quick trap to see if they can tie it up first. That's what's coming up. January 10th at Marquette. And four games in a row in the Big East on mm -hmm. FS1 for Butler. Man, there's just, there aren't any easy games in conference play with regard to the Big East. At home or away. So Georgetown coming up. Mm -hmm. 
Dijon's. Already beaten Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Seton Hall with two huge wins so far, beating Nova. Two game road yeah, swing. Dan Hurley and UConn are at Xavier. They will go home, then go back mm -hmm. on the road to Cincinnati. Georgetown, Creighton, Villanova. Villanova. The game will be on Fox. 3 0 start for the Wildcats. Yes. Seven point game. Clock tipping, ticking down, and a timeout. Timeout. <laughs> Posh Alexander didn't see him, but. He up here, Brooks wide open to his left hand side, streaking down. Could have gotten a quick three. Little thing. They had a great possession there defensively. Didn't box out. Cam Spencer came up with an offensive rebound. It's those little things that make the difference between your being able to close out games on your home floor or on the road. But I do feel they're in the right direction. We're right there with Providence, right here tonight with number four UConn. Just a touch short. And number four, UConn, overcomes a seven-point hole at halftime and beats Butler, turning it around, beating him by seven. And they get to three and one in the Big East. Fun Friday night of basketball. More to come. Number nine.